Hello, my name's Claire Norris. I'm a junior doctor in South Wales. Thank you for asking me to present my literature review at this conference today. And I'm sorry that the technology um, has meant that this we're having to use this pre-recorded lecture, but I hope you enjoy the presentation. So the title of my paper is um, The Use of eHealth Technologies to Support Communication with Parents in the Neonatal Unit an updated literature review for the COVID-19 era. So in this talk, I would like to discuss um, what we found in this review and um, what that means in the context of COVID. And um, of course, we'll open up to any questions at the end. So the background to this is um, in the UK, approximately one in eight infants are admitted to neonatal care units, which accounts for um, 95,000 babies in the UK every year. And it has a huge impact for parents, parental stress, and parents' mental health. Um, in neonatal uh, units, something called family-centered care is one of the fundamental um, ideas um, in the delivery of care. Um, so it's basically getting the parents as involved as possible in care delivery and decision making. Um, and e-health is um, what the WHO use, uses to describe um, any form of information and communication technology um, that can be used in the delivery of health services. Um, so combining those together, two previous reviews um, assessing studies through May 2016 had found some interesting um, initial evidence for this. Um, so the studies um, that they included involved the use of web webcams, SMS messaging and mobile applications to communicate with parents. They generally found some good results, including um, the parents being very accepting of these e-health me measures. But they did find um, these studies difficult to compare as they were all very different. And they also found some gaps, um, including lacking multidisciplinary involvement and also um, lacking evidence of bundled interventions. So when lots of these different interventions were used together. So as we all know, um, COVID-19 was first identified in Wuhan in December 2019 um, and was declared a pandemic in March 2020. It had many vast implications on our personal lives and on medical care. Um, and one of those implications has been an increase in restrictions and limitations placed on parental visiting in NICU units. Um, so generally, um, e-health measures, there's been a huge drive to e-health measures um, globally. Um, there was an initial um, paper published in The Lancet by Schwam et al, um, describing how um, many services were having to translate their care onto online, having online video consultations, and lots of this stuff was very new. So there's a stuff's happening, this drive is happening at a fast rate, um, but I do think there's been trials. Um, trials are struggling to keep up with this rate of change. Um, so therefore, um, an updated literature review we thought was required um, at this time when e-health was being implemented ahead of the evidence base. So moving on to the methodology behind the literature review. So um, we searched um, two databases, Medline and um, CIN AHL databases, and the keywords I have written on the slide that we used. Um, to make sure this was the most up-to-date literature review and didn't have any overlap from previous reviews, uh, we included papers published from May 2016 up until May 2020 when the um, search was conducted. 
as e-health is developing all across the world, we um, didn't have any restrictions on geographical location. And um, CASP methodology was used to assess the papers. In terms of inclusion and exclusion criteria, um, we included um, any papers that involved um, premature or unwell babies needing admission to the neonatal unit. And um, we included, we excluded papers that um, uh, were mainly using e-health as a diagnostic or clinical tool, um, as our main focus was, as I've mentioned, is e-health for communication and education of parents. So our inclusion and exclusion criteria led us to um, these search results, as you can see on the slide. So um, the Medline search left us with 69, which after um, using our exclusion and inclusion criteria, um, only eight studies uh, were deemed to be eligible for use in this review. And the search of our other databases produced duplicate studies and secondary searches of reference list um, didn't produce any new studies, leaving us six studies involved in this review. Just going to talk a bit now about the studies that were included. Um, so there was um, different styles of study, different um, types of study that were included. One randomized controlled trial, two perspective cohort studies, one retrospective non-inferiority study, and one service evaluation. Uh, three of the studies were Scandinavian studies um, and three from North America. And um, four of the studies um, assessed outcomes in the transition period after discharge of the infants. Um, one assessed outcomes during the NICU stay and one was a review of uh, mobile applications as education materials for parents. So they were all quite different. Um, and um, on the right hand side, you can see the types of um, e-health interventions that were used. Um, so um, one of which included video call messaging photos and the ability for parents to send measurements um, to the staff at the NICU unit. So there was some that were more simple and some that involved quite uh, bundled interventions. Uh, moving on to talk a little bit about what we found. Um, so the infant outcomes uh, found that reduced emergency hospital visits um, so reduced emergency visits to hospital um, were found with the um, neonatal telehome care. So uh, post-discharge involvement of e-health. And two individual studies found that, um, and one of which uh, the randomized controlled study was found statistically significant results. Um, one of the studies found um, no difference in rates of exclusive breastfeeding with the neonatal telehome care compared with the control. As we discussed, family-centered care is crucial to NICU units um, running. We also included parental outcomes as part of our results. So um, actually the parental outcomes were really favorable. So um, in two studies, um, they found that 75 to 76% of parents preferred um, involvement of neonatal telehome care um, to in-person hospital visits after discharge. Uh, and the Willard study found that 91% of parents said that the um, technology was easy to use. And a subjective study using semi-structured interviews uh, found that um, the neonatal telehome care um, interventions empowered caregivers, giving them improved confidence. So there were some subjective and some objective uh, results in the parental outcomes. So um, these e-health measures wouldn't work without the support of staff. Um, so we also assessed the staff outcomes. Some of the studies included um, outcomes for the staff. 
Um, Willard's study involved multiple disciplines, so neonatologists, psychologists, and nurses, and um, used eHealth to um, involve staff located at different hospitals. Um, so that was a new development that hadn't been um, uh, evaluated before. Most staff found that uh, these interventions saw promise, but there was logistical challenges highlighted. And one of the studies, um, an improvement method they included was um, a telemedicine coordinator um, to help organize um, all of this additional work on top of their normal uh, work patterns. So overall, the strengths of the literature review was that there was some consistency in findings despite the uh, differences across the trials. Um, so they found that the, um, there was the reduced emergency hospital visits and that parents generally liked it and even preferred it in some cases. And uh, another thing to note is that um, this literature review showed developments in areas noted as lacking in the previous reviews in 2017 by Doll and Epstein. And those are the involvement of the multidisciplinary team and the use of um, lots of interventions bundled together um, in the um, Willard study. The limitations that we found was that um, only six studies were eligible for inclusion in this review. Um, with two studies, um, over, including overlapping participants. So uh, quite a small review, um, but still um, definitely showing progress. And we also thought, um, are these results uh, generalizable between NICU units? So some of the Scandinavian studies um, have units set up for parents to be heavily involved in um, their care. So perhaps these units would be more favorable to positive results with the neonatal telehome care. Um, and not every um, unit has that capability. And obviously uh, this is, these studies were published before March, 2020, May, 2020. So um, would these work in the context of COVID um, would be another, um, potential um, area for future research. Another limitation was um, the staff that were involved in this neonatal telehome care were quite um, extensively, often quite extensively trained and quite passionate about the development of these um, interventions. So um, I suppose another limitation would be, would it be as feasible or well received by staff when rolled out more widely? So I thought I would just uh, present a little update um, to put this, what we learned in this literature review into context for um, the time that we're in now. Um, so as we all know, um, COVID is ongoing. Um, as of this week, um, there's been approximately 225 million confirmed cases of COVID and uh, more than 4.5 million deaths. And now we have vaccines available. There's been more than 5.6 million vaccine doses. In terms of e-health, um, a, a rudimentary search found that uh, digital health uh, solutions um, have been coined sort of a revolution in sort of addressing some of the challenges that um, COVID has presented. Um, and another rudimentary search found that there's potential for um, artificial intelligence to be used in e-health as we sort of move more into digital healthcare. Um, I would like to talk about um, a couple of papers um, that have been published since the literature review. The first one of this is <clears throat> um, how this paper um, published in um, this year in 2021 
um, development of clinical virtual care pathways to engage and support families requiring neonatal intensive care in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The goals for this study was to understand the impact of COVID restrictions on parents um, and staff members in neonatal intensive care units and um, to develop virtual care pathways um, to meet those identified needs, which just shows that this field is an area of ongoing research and um, an area where strategies are continually being developed. So um, what's next in neonatal telehome care? Um, there's obviously a lot going on and whether COVID restrictions remain and this increased need continues, um, I suppose we will just have to see. But um, there is a charity in the UK called Bliss um, for babies born premature or sick who have been, um, there's this ongoing um, campaign called Parents Aren't Visitors. Um, where they're trying to call on the government to publish a national neonatal roadmap, setting out how neonatal units will return to usual family access, um, which just shows that there is um, public awareness that parents need to be involved in neonatal units. And I suppose the challenge will be, how can that be achieved safely? Um, and um, obviously, we need more research done, but e-health could certainly be an option, although it clearly doesn't uh, completely um, eradicate the need for face-to-face -face, um, input from parents and bonding. Another study in the pipeline is um, a UK-based study that um, plans to use daily electronic updates um, to be sent to parents during the NICU stay. Um, and again, we'll see whether that has good outcomes for parents, for staff, and whether that would be um, another way that parents could be kept involved in their infant's care. So hopefully I haven't run over time too much, but um, in summary, I'd just like to say that um, digital healthcare is rapidly evolving and post-COVID health models um, are believed to, um, it's likely that they will adopt more remote health methods. Um, this review shows that in the last four years, there's been a number of new developments. Um, there's been some advantages as we've discussed and um, more tri larger trials are needed and um, more trials in the context of COVID. I'd like to acknowledge my tutor in this project, Dr. Ayad Al Muzaffar. And I would also like to um, acknowledge the Journal of Neonatal Nursing, um, where who published um, my article in December 2020. Okay. Um, I will attach my references and um, open up. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Um, thank you very much for listening.